yeah, so we saw uh, demos of Laplace's equation right last time around and uh, what we will there are a few things that I left out that I did not mention which I will mention now. Then we will look at uh, applying boundary conditions I do not know if you remember before the demo demonstration I was talking about applying uh, various types of boundary conditions right I talked about different problems. So we will just quickly look at applying uh, what are called Neumann boundary conditions or derivative boundary conditions okay uh, we will spend a little time on that and if there are no questions after that we will try to see where we leave Laplace's equation behind for now we will come back to it later right and go on to other other simple problems fine. So this sort of came under the I do not if you remember this came under the category of some simple problems that is right now just for you to recollect we have shown that we can represent numbers on the computer right arrays on the computer functions on the computer derivatives on the computer and having done that we said let us look at a few simple problems where these can be used so that we can represent differential equations on the computer and see if we can solve them. And the first simple problem that we looked at was Laplace's equation is that fine okay right. So what we will do today uh, let me just first add a little so to yesterday's uh, so we are solving nabla squared phi equals 0 and the discrete version of that right we did the discrete version of that as I had indicated earlier so if, if phi h is the solution right is the candidate solution right or if you want to deal directly with the continuous equation if phi is the candidate solution this little phi is the actual solution. So if you were to substitute this in there right if it were a solution then del squared of this so nabla squared of this would be 0 okay but if it is not then it will leave a residue that is you will get nabla squared phi equals uh, some residue okay you can call it r. So in fact in this case in two dimensions it would be r of x y fine. So yesterday in the demo that one of the reasons why I did that 5 by 5 matrix again was I wanted to actually show that one was to calculate the difference between two iterates and the other was to use the residue okay and I would suggest that you do both without adding too much detail right I would suggest that you do both especially in SOR you may find that there is an interesting difference okay especially in SOR you may find that there is an interesting difference. So I would suggest that you would find both of these. Now the residue of course if you have a, 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 a domain we have been taking a square domain so far so the, the residue Rxy is defined within the domain right on the boundary capital phi and little phi satisfy the boundary condition therefore it is 0 the residue is 0 okay the residue is non zero so if you are to take a grid on your grid on your grid at each point you will actually have an rij right at each point you will actually have an rij is that fine which is the residue at that at that point which you can find by taking Laplace's equation that is the average of these four quantities minus four times the middle quantity right and if that is not 0 then you have you have a residue at that point fine okay and if you say that I want to find out what is the magnitude of the residue you have to use the dot product again okay. So the dot product uh, we defined so the dot product of r comma r would be nothing but the integral over whatever the domain is in this case this is the domain okay r squared say d s or whatever am I making sense okay I just very quietly extended the definition that we gave earlier I just said by making it d okay the domain of definition and it works it will work. So in reality in reality you, you, you try this out you repeat the problem you repeat the programs whatever I wrote you repeat them and you will see that the value of the error that I plotted 
and the value of uh, the residue that you get the error that I plotted that seems to depend on the grid size actually the way we calculated it it would depend on the grid size whereas if you do it this way it is not going to depend on the grid size okay this is an actually an integral actually an integral. So if you were to right you so you please you want you want to evaluate this or you want me to write the expression to evaluate this this double integral this is a this is an integral over an area okay so you you can you can try to evaluate it and see what you get okay so when i say the norm of r when i say the norm of r i mean the square root of this i mean the square root of that and in a sense it will turn out to be the square root of the sums of r i j s so on right okay but you have to be a bit careful because when you evaluate these integrals there is a the the uh, you can use when you evaluate the integral for instance you can take r i j times this area to find the integral over that area something of that sort okay is that fine okay only thing is it is r squared here it is not r i j that is the thing to remember okay is that fine everybody is with me okay the second thing is uh, before we go on and since I have talked about the residue uh, an apt point here is we have so far taken the actual solution to be x squared minus y squared okay we have, you, have, you, have, you have solved a problem where we have taken boundary conditions so that the actual solution is x squared minus y squared. So it is possible for you to verify that your code works. I chose this because it makes life easy for you, you are writing this program possibly for the first time right I wanted to keep everything simple. What was the truncation error for the second derivative term do you remember what the truncation error was for the second derivative term what was the derivative involved fourth derivative the truncation error is, is like some delta x squared but the derivative was fourth derivative assuming that we are representing the derivative I am sorry derivative was fourth derivative right or if you say phi instead of u derivative was fourth derivative am I making sense. So the truncation error by this is basically 0 right so at this point I would suggest that you choose an analytic function where the truncation error is not 0 this derivative is not 0. So either you did either choose a something that has a fifth degree polynomial z power 5 z power 4 something of that sort z is a complex number either choose the real of z power 5 do something like this that is one possibility right or pick something like sin z okay pick a transcendental function okay exponential of z uh, hyperbolic tangent of z something of that sort right okay fine and see how well your code works right so far the problem that I have given you unit square everything is well behaved it was deliberately chosen. Now you have a situation where you are going to pick a function which is where this truncation error will not automatically be 0. Okay, so see how well it behaves right how well does the code behave as well when you when the truncation error is there any change in behavior so just try it out okay right so this, this is important so the process the, uh, the process that we are going through right now is also important so anytime you encounter e equation for the first time right if you if you are a class of equations you should see whether there is a sub problem for which you have an analytic solution pick a simple analytic solution and test your code against that analytic solution okay then you can make the known solution as more complicated try do not try to do it all in one shot that is not a good idea okay do not try, try to write the program all in one shot is that fine. The second thing is what if you have an equation for which you do not have a solution you do not have an analytic solution right we are here is supposed to be computational fluid dynamics though we are not going to look at Navier-Stokes equations in great detail right right it is a it is an introduction to computational fluid dynamics so we are really not going to get to navier stokes equations directly but there are not that many analytic solutions to navier stokes equations so what do you do if you don't have an analytic solution how do you test your code how do you test your program so one way to do it would be let's take this let's take laplacian of phi equals 0 and say that we don't know of a way to generate a solution for this on a unit square okay so then you just guess something 
So just say instead of saying x squared minus y squared, we guessed x squared plus y squared. We guess x squared plus y squared. So anyway, you know it's not a solution already, right? So if you substitute it, it will give you a residue. What is the residue that it gives you? Two plus two, right? The residue that it gives you is two plus two. So this is a solution to nabla squared phi equals four, right? So I started off with an equation for which I didn't know a solution. Now I have an equation for which I know the solution. Am I making sense? Of course, there may be difficulties associated. Sometimes there are difficulties associated with adding a right hand side. Okay, right? But if you are trying to figure out how well am I representing this nabla squared phi, how well am I representing these derivatives, how well is it working, then it is possible for me to actually turn around, then it is it's possible for me to actually turn around, right? Substitute some guess solution into the equation. It leaves the residue and just say, well, that that does it for me. Okay, that's an equation for which I have a solution. Is that clear? Okay, because very often you will hear people saying, oh, I'm going to compare it to experiment because I don't have a solution. I'm going to compare it to, a, to uh, you know, the solution of another code because I don't have a solution. Not necessary, right? You can generate an equation that's very close for which you have a solution. What it will do is it will add typically a source term that has its own consequences, that has its own consequences as long as you are aware of that, but basically you can turn around and generate an equation for which you have a, a solution. Is that fine? Okay. Right. So this is really as far as uh, the, the residue goes. So the residue is not only useful to check whether you have a solution, the residue is also very useful for you to generate a solution. Okay. Is that fine everyone? Right. Let us do the last part I was talking about the uh, Neumann conditions. So conditions so effectively what you can have is you can have a we we'll still stick with our unit square okay. There is a very simple reason why I am sticking to a unit square or you can change to a rectangle or whatever. Uh, if the geometry changed then we cannot use a Cartesian mesh, right. Then we would have to do something special. Either we would have to use unequal meshes or we would have to get into some the game of grid generation which is a completely different course, okay. So I am restricting myself to squares and rectangles simply because uh, it illustrates what we need for the introduction to CFD part. So on one of the sides. Right, it is possible that what you have is a condition that is like dou phi dou n equals either a function or 0, okay, in particular 0. I say 0 because this is a condition that we are used to in fluid mechanics, right, dou phi dou n equals 0. And on the other, other sides, you may actually be given a function of. Uh, you may actually be given functions of x and y. Am I making sense? Okay. So if you were to discretize this, if you were to break this up using grid lines, okay, on these nodal values it is possible for you to find the phi value directly from the function specified. So what do we do here? What do we do at the bottom? I need a proposal. So I can use a finite difference method to represent, so I can use a finite difference method to represent dou phi dou n at this point, okay. And there are many ways by which we can do it. One possibility is that the simplest thing, so if this point is 1, uh, this point is 1, that point is 2, then you can just basically say phi 2 minus phi 1 divided by delta y is 0 telling us phi 1. That is easy enough to do, okay. So that is a boundary condition. So you would have actually evaluate this, this point on the boundary. You would actually calculate this point in the boundary. Where values of the function are given on the boundary, 
they remain a constant they do not change where the value is not given on the boundary it becomes part of your iteration whatever the value is at 2 the same value is given at 1 that is one possibility okay is that fine if you are not satisfied with the truncation error of this representation you can actually use three points right you can use a higher order three point representation to find the first derivative at this point okay everybody right and uh, at this point at uh, at this juncture i want to point out something it's okay that we had do phi do n equals 0 you could have do phi do n equals some function either function of n or function of y or whatever it is you could have do phi do phi do n not a function of n but do phi do n as a function some value okay do phi do n something that eval that that changes okay that changes uh, one it could change along this along this length right so in this case i i don't want to say t or whatever so do phi do n which is a function i just put a dot there and uh, your uh, the the problem may be that if you have to integrate this right uh, consider a situation where for example that this is heat flux or something of that sort so somebody gives you a, a boundary condition where this is heat flux they are telling you how much energy is flowing into the system okay so this is the rate at which the energy is flowing into the system this is f right so you say what is the big deal so you just set this derivative equals the f right that is what it looks like in this case you have to be very careful as to whether what is the nature of this whether it is a whether it is a whether whether the direction is important okay very often we do not think about it. So go back to the discussion that we had. So you have do phi do n equals zero. This is x direction, and do phi do n equals zero, or do phi do n equals some function on this boundary. Okay. So I am working up to something. I mean, you are wondering what what is he talking about? See, the idea is uh, when you normally talk about a derivative, there are two things that are a derivative. Basically, has two components to it right the way the, the way i would like to think of it is basically a linear transformation in the direction okay this is something that i mentioned earlier at the beginning of the semester so the derivative basically consists of a linear transformation in the direction it's very important for me as to where i'm going to go now right and uh, you are used to it from the you are used to it from the uh, multivariate calculus point of view you are not quite what do you call it you do not quite we do not quite think about it when we are talking about uh, calculus of one variable okay derivatives in one variable. So you, you are used to the directional derivative where I say grad phi dotted with n right right or the grad phi dotted with ds some differential element gives me d phi you are used to this right you are all familiar with this this is the so this is this is the linear transformation this is the direction this is really the definition of a derivative okay now you say so what what how does this how is this important well it makes a difference you can say the derivative is something at some point but it makes a difference whether you are walking uphill or walking downhill the direction is important it is not not enough to say that oh the I am on a mountain it is important to you to know whether you are walking uphill or walking downhill the direction is important do you understand so if you are applying a boundary condition which is based on a derivative most of the times when you when you say derivative when you are thinking derivative when we take a derivative of, of some function we are implicitly thinking in terms of positive x direction do you understand what I am saying most of the times you are saying do f do x dx is dy d, df you implicitly think in your mind you are implicitly thinking of dx being a positive quantity it could be negative you could be going in the other direction it could be going downhill okay so anytime you are applying derivative boundary conditions you have to be careful make sure that you are evaluating the derivative properly 
if it is the derivative equals 0 it is immaterial but if the derivative equals something then you have to pay attention right especially in multiple dimensions there is a direction involved pay attention to what you are doing you can get the sign wrong it is very easy to get the sign wrong okay is that fine are there any questions right see normally derivatives in one dimensions we do not bother but usually uh, the place where students get into trouble is if they are talking about solving the heat equation which we will look at it a little later in the semester and I give a boundary condition a derivative boundary condition on the right hand side because I am a mean guy right. I give a derivative boundary condition on the right hand side which is not a, which has a flux term if it is a if it is a vector then typically people run into difficulty because they do not remember that the derivative actually is a has a there is a direction associated it is a linear transformation and a direction and in one dimension we do not think about it but in multiple dimensions it is very clear that it is in fact in multiple dimensions very often you call it directional derivative it is always directional derivative okay it just so happens that in in one dimension uh, the direction is dx that is what you are thinking about okay is that fine are there any questions. So what you can do is you can possibly try again Laplace's equation try to apply uh, Neumann conditions and right set dou phi dou n equals 0 on one of the sides and see what happens what happens to your is that fine okay right. So what we will do is we will now change gears as I had indicated so we have looked at we have looked at this equation so far let us look at a different equation we will come back to this later in the semester let us look at a different equation I am going to look at the equation do u do t plus a do u do x equals 0 okay is that fine everyone so this is the first order it's a simple equation it has a long name first order linear one dimensional wave equation okay so it says it all all the derivatives are first derivatives okay the equation is a linear equation you can verify that it is linear and it is one dimensional in the sense that it is in one space dimension and I have introduced a new term which is time okay so actually it is still 2D as far as we are concerned it is two, it's still 2 dimensional because it has X and T instead of X and Y I mean I may have well have written do u do y plus a do u do x equals 0 right it is just chalk dust we just interpret that y as t right but because it is in one space dimension we refer to it as a one dimensional problem is that fine okay. So what is the nature of this equation what is this equation what is the behavior of this equation is it possible for us we had an analytic solution for Laplace's equation is it possible for us to get an analytic solution to this equation okay. So you may have seen this you may have seen this or a variant of this in your partial differential equations course uh, let me just quickly go through this it is possible for me to write this in terms as a directional derivative it is actually possible for me to write this as a directional derivative how do I do that so uh, do not let, let it bother you that this is t right as I said it is just chalk dust it could be y right so this is basically looks like j do by do t that is an operator plus i a do by do x these are unit vectors that i is not that is a unit vector in the standard Cartesian coordinate system acting on u is that fine equals 0 uh, what am I doing and this I can split as j plus i a dotted with 
j dou by dou t plus i dou by dou x on u equals 0 which is of course some s dot grad of u equals 0. Now you will understand why I made such a song and dance about the directional derivative right because I need a directional derivative is that fine where s is j plus a i or i a. Okay, and if the length s, if the coordinate s is along s, then this basically tells us from the definition of the directional derivative, this in fact is a derivative, this tells us that du ds equals 0. Or u is constant, along s. Is that fine? Okay. Of course, if the differential equation, the right-hand side had not been zero, the right-hand side had been something else, then this will be du ds equals f, and then u will not be constant along s. Okay because the right hand side is 0 it happens that u is constant along s. What does this mean? Let us look at this pictorially. So that is x that is t. So in your course in physics maybe you have heard of world lines or something of that sort right. So this is basically what we are doing this is an x t plane and we are drawing world lines right that is what I, I want you to if you have run into this I want you to just think about Right. If you run into it in your physics, I want you to just remember world lines. Okay, that's fine. So this is x, that's t. This is what we are saying. So let's say that we are solving. We are given that differential equation, and we are given a condition along t equals zero at time t equals zero. We are given what is the state of u. What this basically says is that along the direction s, along the direction in this is s this is along the direction s this is a vector s right starting at this point I am going to measure the length s and this basically says along this line du ds equals 0 is that okay everyone that means u is constant along this line. So if you take another line and since a is constant okay did i mention a is constant no but i mentioned that it is linear and if you if i if you checked out if you go back and check to see when when is it linear you did you would need right a to be constant or a function of xy a could be a function of xy even then it would be linear okay so a is a constant a is a constant right if a is a function of xy it, still, it would still be linear I am getting a few shakes fine okay right. So then you would have a different s and even along this line u would be a constant okay. So we have a differential equation is there a physical problem for which this different differential equation works. So it is very simple this let us let us just say we have a stream of water right so this is the standard example that I give you have a stream of water that is flowing along along the x coordinate direction okay. So I am here and in that stream of water I am going to add chalk dust okay. So the chalk dust that, that was added here at some time t equals 0 travels along the x coordinate direction in time right. So in xt, so if the stream is moving at a constant speed a, right, after some time, after some time, the chalk dust that I added here would have tra traveled to that point. Do you understand what I am saying? Okay. No. So 
basically all it is doing is so here you have a physical problem that is actually represented by this equation. So I have a stream that is moving at a constant speed I add some marker some tracer right I add some ink dye or I add some chalk dust I add something and that propagates the property u that you are talking about is the amount of chalk dust that you have added right at the type of chalk dust that you have so I have added blue chalk dust in one spot I add white chalk dust here and I add blue chalk dust somewhere else and that blue chalk dust travels along that line okay at the speed what is the speed it travels the distance a in unit unit time right so that is 1 j that is 1 j and this is a i it travels the distance a in unit time is that okay everyone okay so it is very clear so what this basically does is what this basically does is right it propagates whatever that uh, that is there at this given point at this initial point it propagates it at the speed a right it propagates it at the speed a and as a consequence because uh, du ds equals 0 because du ds equals 0 which means that it is not as though uh, 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 white chalk dust is being added everywhere see it is being added only at one point if I were to along the length of the along the length if I were to add white chalk dust right then this right hand side would be an f the rate at which I am adding that white chalk dust okay and as you go along you would be accumulating chalk dust as you as you go along fine uh, another possible example something that maybe you are familiar with is if you are uh, you turn on the water heater in the morning you want to take a shower right very soon you learn that you should not get under the shower and turn on the right tap or faucet or whatever it is because what you will get initially is cold water it takes time for the water hot water to travel from the water heater to where you are right so if you open the tap to a certain extent if the water is traveling so there is a front so you have a pipe there is hot water here on the left hand side and there is cold water so you open the tap this surface call it a contact surface if you want this surface propagates at a certain speed so if it travels at the speed of a then you will know that your cold water and hot water that interface what is the what is the along the length of the pipe at each time at each time instant along the length of the pipe where it is is that fine so it is a very simple equation it is a very simple equation okay but what it does for us is it picks up this property called advection we use the term advection because for historical reasons convection is already used up by the convective heat transfer people so it is convection but just so that there is no confusion in, in at future times we will introduce the term advection okay so something is being carried and in this case because du ds equals 0 something is being carried without change in identity is that okay right some property is being some property u is being propagated without change in identity this is very different from Laplace's equation Laplace's equation was averaging right Laplace's equation was averaging whereas what this is basically doing is this is carrying carrying propagating whatever that you have whatever you have is being propagated in a certain direction okay this is this is very important it is being propagated in a certain direction so for us this is very important these so you could clearly what we have done in a sense if you think about it this is like we are saying if the coordinate system were not this xt coordinate system but were actually aligned along this line then instead of having a partial differential equation we would have an ordinary differential equation really that is what this says this basically says that in somehow if you had managed to rotate rotate the coordinate system the physics of the problem that you are solving this would be this would just be an ordinary differential equation right see in your mind I do not want you to think that is why I said this is just chalk dust if you go if you go to if you go to uh, of course I mean this example may not help everybody but if you go to uh, our library right where the staircase is at an angle with respect to the 
coordinate systems as seen by the streets. So there are two roads, there are two roads, a library or institute library has two roads that flank it okay. So that could represent your coordinate system but the staircase to the library is that way okay. So if you have this as x and y coordinates, if you think about it what, what is this, what is the given stair, what is this given step along that the height is a constant that is the property. You understand so do not think of, do not think of it as t as, as it, has to, it has to be time. Right. It just basically says that along this, some this property is a constant, the height is a constant. So you have these stairs and along different, if I, if I know that the stair one step starts somewhere at a certain height, I guarantee that if you travel along that line, that height will be the same. If you travel in some other direction, then you are in for a surprise because the height will suddenly abruptly change. Am I making sense? So if you travel along that line, right, the height is a constant these are basically characteristic directions is that okay right in this x y coordinate system and there is a coordinate system if you perform a rotation you can find out what that orientation is along which the differential equation for that is it is a constant height is a constant am I making sense d h d s or whatever it is it is, is 0 is that clear everybody right. So it need not be it when I say propagation it is propagation. When I say propagation it, 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 it looks like propagation that is because there is time but it need not always be in time the other coordinate need not be time okay the other coordinate need not be time is that fine everyone okay. So this, uh, this equation now results in uh, this, this, uh, this kind of a scenario is there a way for us to somehow solve this is there any other way that we can is there anything else that we can do. Is there any other way that we can solve this equation? There are lots of examples that I, I mean going back there are lots of examples that I can give for is there any other way that I can solve this equation. You have to go with the notion that uh, you have to go with the notion that right remember what I had said earlier so we are basically trying to integrate this differential equation okay and all integration is guessing. So you guess you substitute into the differential equation and you try to see whether you are able to get a solution to right whether it whether whether the guess is a solution to the given, given differential equation or not am I making sense by substituting into the differential equation and verifying whether it is a solution or not. So normally what you would do is you would just guess. So with the information that we have, the knowledge that we have, is there a way for us to guess? We will see, maybe we will go along a little further and see whether that, uh, so what could be the, what could be the nature of the function that, that is propagated. Let us try a few functions and then see where that takes us, maybe that will give us an idea as to what is happening. So if my initial condition, a typical boundary condition could be u at uh, u at t equals 0 right u of x comma t is a function u of x comma 0 equals let us start with a simple one is this enough is this enough have I specified everything that you need to solve the problem a is 1 where do I give a boundary condition where do I give a boundary condition no t equals 0 this is the initial condition. So you have to be a bit careful with so since we are saying time now we will get come up with two different two different names so that is the initial condition we say initial condition and boundary condition that is the initial condition okay 
y x equals 0 because it is propagating from left to right because it is like propagating from left to right does that make sense why cannot I prescribe something at x equals l let us say that let us say that I am actually looking at something propagating through a pipe the length of the pipe is l you are saying that I should prescribe the condition at x equals 0 right. So you are saying that I should prescribe the condition at x equals 0 right that is fine that is correct why cannot I prescribe it at x equals l. We can't. We can or we can't. We can. If A is negative. If A is negative. Ah, A is one. If A is negative, we can. No, that is that's not, that conversation can't take. That doesn't make sense. A is one. We look at if 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 you flip sign, uh, why it happens is a different story. Right? You are just basically saying flip the coordinate system around. That's one way. Yeah. If A is negative, what is going to happen? The characteristic sign directions will change, the slope of the characteristics will change. That is the key. So, you see, the thing is, so think about it. I open the tap and I insist that hot water comes, but hot water does not come. You understand? I cannot make it hot water. I cannot open the tap and insist that the water at the at the exit of the tap be hot. Right? The water in the water heater is hot. I can turn on the switch and make the water in the water heater hot. Right, I cannot turn on the switch see unless we do something to this contraption but right now water heater pipe tap right or a faucet whatever that is all you have. So you cannot insist that the water at this end be hot just because you turned on the water heater. What you can do by turning on the water heater is eventually the water hot water will come out eventually because you turned the water heater you understand what I am saying. So you can prescribe the condition here right. You can this in this case in this particular case you can prescribe the condition here you cannot assert the key thing is assert you cannot assert. So I can put chalk dust here if I can only put chalk dust at the inlet I have a stream of water if I can only put chalk dust here I cannot put chalk dust here and insist simultaneously that at a given time right chalk dust be something else there it is not possible and once I have put a certain amount of chalk dust here and the chalk dust has travelled the chalk dust has travelled or it has gone along the length of the hot water has gone a length of, along the length of the pipe. I cannot at that point insist I cannot assert saying that no no the hot water has there they should not be hot water I want cold water right you are now committed you let the hot water in it is in the pipe it cannot go anywhere else you let water out you are going to get hot water right you cannot assert that it has to go back being cold water. Right, because remember the boundary condition is an assertion you are going to say this is the value this is the value of the temperature this is the amount of chalk dust that is there okay. So because of the nature because of the direction in which the, the uh, characteristics are oriented right which is which comes back to what Ashok was saying if you change the sign of A then the propagation direction changes if A is negative then you are travelling in the negative x direction. Okay, then the property is being propagated from if A happens to be negative the property is being propagated from a positive x quantity a larger x quantity to a smaller x quantity okay. In which case then you cannot prescribe the condition on the left hand side you can only prescribe the condition on the right hand side am I making sense okay right. So what we need is we therefore need a condition on the left hand side which could be u equals u of 0 comma t so for all time right starting at t equals 0 if it were constant let us say it is 1 you keep life easy then what are you going to get this is xt okay. So on the xt plane of course we have the same characteristics but this time they are all 45 degree lines because A is 1 all the lines are supposed to be parallel independent of how I have drawn them in 45 degree lines and so they also come there is something there but we have cut our domain there so there are 45 degree lines coming from the boundary also yeah please.
Meaning what? Whatever boundary condition that you give. No, you are saying that instead of being on this, if I give it on some curve, is that what you are saying? Not the initial condition, the boundary condition. Yeah. That I give it as at u of x not comma t. Equal u of x not comma t equal to something. No, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I am just trying to keep this. In fact, this is this problem that I am talking about right now is a rather boring problem. Right? Nothing, nothing exciting is going to happen. This is a rather this is this is this is a this problem that I'm specific problem that I'm talking about right right now is a rather boring problem, right? I'll admit that there are when we come to the numerics there are interesting things that we're going to see with respect to this equation, right? But I just want to make sure that I just want to make sure that there are no issues, right? That we are we are basically all on the same page and there are certain elements of this physics that important for me. For example, so it need it can be it can be at x naught. What you're basically saying is this particular equation I can actually integrate back in time also, right. In a sense I think you understand, right. So this, this particular equation you can actually integrate back in time. So in a sense if you say that the value of something, if there is some value here you can go back in time. But that looks very suspiciously like making A as minus A, sort of, right, okay. If you think about it, you look at I mean it com comes back to the same thing. So you can go back in time. This is a, this is an equation that you can you can integrate in time. So you could say that this is like uh, you are out, you are you are you are hunting for somebody, you are looking for somebody, right? And you find a clue, and then you try to or you you get an order, right? You are you are so you then try to figure out you try to work back to see from where does this come, right? And of course all 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 uh, adventure stories that you have read as children, they are always talking about uh, being upwind or downwind or whatever of the, of the, of the quarry, right. So you, you, you do not, you want to be downwind of the quarry so that the right whoever that you are hunting cannot smell you but you can smell them, right that kind of a thing. So you or you can, so you have to look, so that is, that is basically a matter of where was this person, right, where, where is this person. So you, if I give you some value on the characteristic here, it is actually possible that you can trace it back. Okay, you can go back in time. Is that fine? Okay, but you could give the value. You could you could prescribe the value uh, in reality in any point. And, uh, also, how would it depend, uh, it is by u of x comma zero or u of zero comma t? U of x comma zero. Or u of zero comma t. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, as I said, it's all just structures. The t and the x part, right now, that it is whether it is time or not. So that that's what that's where we that's that's what you have to look at. Whether you are able to integrate integrate back. What it finally boils down to is, as I said, whatever coordinate system that you give, that you can rotate the coordinate system to align and get an ODE along this line, right? And get an ODE along, and that 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 is possible is the nature of that equation. Okay. It may not always be possible. Sometimes there may be some scaling, stretching. There are other 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 issues that are that are involved. Okay, is that fine? So, right. At that time, we are saying uh, along the characteristic or solution is propagating. Along the characteristic, the yeah. In, in this case, yeah, the solution is propagating. No, no, if you prescribe the condition here, what I am saying is you can, if you say, when you say, when I say prescribe, in a sense in this, in this case what you say is, I discover that the value here, if you insist that this is time, you say I discover that the value here is 1, then you can integrate back and figure out for along that x, at what point in time was it 1, you understand, if your domain, if your domain is that the domain of interest is that you can look at the exit condition if you say if you look at the exit condition for instance just say your hot water pipe your, pi your pipe in your house is 1 meter long and the water is travelling at 1 meter per second. So you know that if it is uh, right 
40 degrees or 50 degrees or 60 degrees Celsius at the exit right now then half a second ago midpoint it was 50 degrees Celsius half a second ago midpoint it was 50 degrees Celsius is that fine okay. So you can integrate back in time or you can integrate forward from that point onwards okay yeah. 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 But when we take t equal to zero, it is u of zero comma zero is again we are seeing one. Yeah. There seems to be a problem at zero comma zero. Right. So this is. So we'll we'll look at it. We'll plot this. We'll plot this to see what happens. So there is actually a sort of a step kind of a thing at that point. Right. I mean, just like you have cold water on one side and hot water on the other side, and there is a very sharp interface between the two. Is that fine? Okay. So we'll get back to this in the next class. Okay, thank you.